Hi everyone, this is a quick run through of a new feature we've implemented in Open Audit that I'm really excited about. Uh, it gives us a lot of flexibility discovering devices on your network and I think you're really going to like it. Um, so as you can see, this install is a fresh install, it has no devices in here. I have uh, populated some credentials in here ahead of time. Um, that's just a standard credential population. You don't need to sit through me doing that. I will make a discovery. And let's discover a subnet that's sitting across on the other side of a VPN. So it's a remote subnet. And that's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to hit submit. As usual, we've created our subnet really quick and easy. Let's execute that guy. He's now running in the background. So what we've implemented are what we're calling discovery scan options. And this will benefit enterprise users the most, uh, professional users somewhat, and community users a little bit as well. Um, so even the, even the people that are using the free version still get a, a bit of benefit out of this. Um, so what it is, per discovery, you can select which set of options you would like to scan the devices in your network with. Um, in the configuration, there is a default. So if you haven't chosen one, like in community, community will just use whatever set as the default for all of its discoveries. Professional users can choose which one of these they would like to use per discovery, and enterprise users can go one step further again. Not only can they choose which one of these they would like to use, they can also create, read, update, and delete these, and they can modify them uh, building on top of these per discovery. Um, so by default, we're shipping with the ultra-fast one as the default. And you can see in here the options are that the device must respond to an ICMP. Uh, we don't bother to use version detection. We do not consider filtered ports open. Or we use aggressive timing, which is T4 in Nmap speak. We don't scan any of the top TCP or UDP ports for Nmap. We only scan ports 22, 135, 6207.8. Uh, for TCP and 161 for UDP. We don't actually scan 21. I was playing around earlier and set that. We can also set a timeout per target. We can exclude TCP and UDP ports. We can exclude IP addresses, IP address ranges, and IP address uh, subnets. And we can also check for SSH on non-standard ports. So if you've got SSH running on 2022, for example, you could put that in here. We'll detect that there's a service on that port and we'll use that port to talk to the device using SSH. Now, because this is an enterprise license install, you can see I can edit all of these. Um, so I can actually get rid of port 21 and that's how it is by default. And that's what will be used if I choose no other options. So now if I go in and create a discovery and if I click the advanced button, uh, our general options are still here but you can see our Nmap options. So by default, we get the ultra fast. We can change that to any of the other ones and you'll see the options change further down the page. And the second bunch of options, you can add and remove and delete to these options to your heart's content, but it won't actually change which discovery option you're using. That top section of fields will stay the same as per the discovery options, but the bottom sections can be added to if you like. And again, for enterprise customers, you can also set device matching rules per discovery. Uh, so these will use the defaults out of the configuration as normal, but you can tweak them if you'd like. Professional users can't change that. They will just use what is in uh, the defaults in the configuration. Um, you might want to change these. Uh, I had an example of this just this morning. We have a network set up, uh, a testing network at work. Uh, it has some virtual Cisco gear on it. Now, when that was set up, a lot of those devices on that network have the same serial number. So by default, we match on serial, um, so it was causing issues. So for that particular discovery on that particular subnet, I could remove the serial matches and everything just worked as it should. So that's a very quick overview. Once you dive into this and have a look, you realize how powerful it really is. It gives you a lot of flexibility and it's really fast. The ultra fast one, this guy is done now. We just scanned that slash 24. 
you can see we scanned 255 addresses, we discovered 27 devices. Out of those, we actually talked to and audited 19 of them, and eight of them we couldn't get much information out of. But if you look at the devices list as well now, we've tweaked this. So if we just run down the list, you can see that first device there, uh, it's a, I know it's actually a TP-Link Wi-Fi unit, uh, it's running SSH, but we had no credentials for it, so we couldn't talk to it. If I click that little add button there, I can add credentials and it's pre-populated because it was SSH, right? We know we want to add some SSH credentials. We now have a new column in the database called identification, which we populate as best we can from the information that we have. So if you have a fully audited system, uh, like which one here, Odom here, where is the Odom? Um, we know that's a virtual server, we know it's from VMware, and we know it's a computer. There's really not much to tell, right? We know everything there is to know about it. Um, but you can see Magni Management here. All we could tell was that it's a device, it responded, and it's running SSH, but we don't know much more about it. So we've now, we've now given a new type to go along with that, and we call those devices unclassified. We know there's something there, we know its host name, we know its IP address, we know it's running SSH, but we really don't know much more. There is still unknown devices, and there's one there, 88.52, and we really know nothing about it. From memory, that's an Apple device sitting on uh, the network at work, uh, one of the, the laptops there that has all the ports turned off, so we couldn't talk to it because we only tried the specific TCP and SNMP ports. We, none of those responded, so we had no management protocols for this guy. No information could be retrieved. It's a genuine unknown device. Uh, so there's a little bit of differentiation there now. If we can get some information, it'll be unclassified. If we can get nothing, it will be unknown. Um, so you can see that's, that's scanned, that slash 24 subnet. And we picked up 27 devices there in uh, how long? Three minutes and five seconds. So it's improved the scan times immeasurably. Uh, we have an example of uh, a customer that is scanning a slash 22 network. Their scan went from 29 hours to complete to under 10 minutes. I know that sounds crazy, um, but they're using the ultra fast scan and they're just zipping through it and they're really happy. You'll still get all your logs. We've tweaked the way the logs are output now. You can see the command is in red. The output to that command is in blue. Um, some of these, let me, some of these will have both in the one log line. Uh, if I'll scroll down far enough, there we go. So we did an SNMP get on that OID and the output response back was the VMware string. Uh, that was for the sys description retrieval for that machine. Um, so the logs are looking really good. Um, you'll see in the IP addresses, um, you'll see why we said it was a device. So 88.1 was responding. We received an open port 22. So we're going to add that to the list. Um, maybe if 22 wasn't open, mainly, uh, maybe if only uh, UDP 161 was open, that would show the same thing. Uh, let's see if we've got any different ones here. Everything runs SSH. Oh, there we go. So that's probably a Microsoft device, right? Port 135 is open, uh, 88.56. If we jump back to our devices and look for 88.56, we can see that device was unclassified. But we know WMI was open, so we're going to, it's a pretty safe bet that it's likely a Windows computer. We don't know that, but it's a, it's a safe guess. So therefore, that's unclassified. It's not unknown, it's the next level up from unknown. Uh, if we had a real audit on that machine, so if I scroll down further, here's one here called Hell. That's a real Windows computer. You can see it also runs SSH, but we know that's a computer. You know, we spoke to it using 135, um, and we, we audited that machine. Uh, we've got some nifty things in there as well. Uh, because we scanned port 62078, we know 88.177 is an iPhone. Um, there's a couple without being able to definitively tell. We know uh, that port is open. We can test the MAC address if we get it. it. comes from Apple. And most, not all, but most iPhones tend to be named Jane's iPhone or Mark's iPhone. So if we have iPhone in the host name, we can, it's a pretty safe bet. You know, that thing's an iPhone. 
Um, we do the same with iPads and iPods as well. Uh, so there's been a lot of improvements in the discovery side of the house. Um, and starting with 2.3.2, it's available to everybody. Uh, that's out now for Linux. It'll be out shortly for Windows. Um, I think you should jump into it and have a look. I think you'll be really impressed. Thanks for your time.